Hi there, this is James from Junior Developer Central and in this video I wanted to show you how you can make a very simple but effective accordion styled homepage or component for your homepage. So uh, you can see here I've just got three sections that I've created with some image backgrounds and when I hover over them you'll see that each one uh, grows to fill the page slightly more and also the background fades out a little bit more just to kind of give more emphasis as to which part of the page the user has hovered over. Okay, so the first step to get started with this project is to get yourself some decent looking photos. So um, I'd recommend just going to Unsplash. Um, that's literally all I did to get this project on the go. I think I just went here and just typed in technology and just download a few of these pictures. We're looking for something that's uh, in a portrait mode and you might want to uh, download those and maybe reduce the file size of those a bit because they can be quite large. And when you've done that, if you just want to create a directory, I've just called this Project Cheats Accordion uh, for the purposes of this video, but obviously feel free to call it whatever you like. And I've put those images that I've downloaded into the directory here. This is set up on a, uh, a ZAMP server running locally, but for this project you don't really need that as long as you've got a, um, a directory that's got your images in and also the HTML that we'll be creating um, then that's pretty much all you need. Uh, so speaking of which uh, if we head over to Visual Studio Code so I've just got an empty HTML file at the moment and I'm just going to populate that with a bit of boilerplate stuff there and let's just call it cheats accordion for the moment. So let's actually get cracking with the code now and the first thing I'm going to do is just actually put the HTML markup into uh, our, our document to start off with. So let's create um, a div. I'm going to give this div a class of container. So this will be an element that will just literally hold everything um, in, our, in our main page. And let's also create uh, some other divs um, called sections. And inside those, I'm just going to give them some titles. So um, the ones I used in the, uh, in the original project were marketing. I'll just put a h1 tag in for that and also technology and finally the other one I would had as advertising um, but feel free obviously to put your own content into there okay so let's just check we're up and running uh, so we can close and splash now and let's just refresh the page and we've got those three div elements and we've got the uh, h1 tags appearing as we'd expected so those three div elements, those sections, are actually stacking on top of each other at the moment, which we'd expect because the div element is a block level element, so it'll just stretch the whole way across the page. So we need to start adding in some CSS to start styling those uh, and making them look as we'd like in the final project. And I'm going to include all of my CSS just in a style tag at the top of the page here. Um, if you're doing this in a real project, obviously you'd want to put it into a different file and then import that. But just so you can see exactly what's going on and we don't have to flip between the two files, I'll just include it here for now. Uh, so the first thing we'll want to do is just target that container element that we put in originally and the reason for that is we actually want to control the flow of the elements with inside it so I'm going to do that by actually setting the display to flex and the other thing I'm going to do is just set the height of that container to 100% of the viewport height uh, so that'll just mean that those images probably aren't going to fit uh, exactly as we'd like them. I think they're different sizes and it will just make sure that the container isn't going over what we can see on the page. But you might want to set this to a different value um, if you're including this feature in a different part of your page. Okay so let's go back over to the page and refresh. So you can see now we've automatically changed the flow of the elements there so those three section divs are actually appearing side by side. So if you remember back to the original demonstration that's pretty much what we were after. So the next step is to get our images loaded in and we're going to be setting them as backdrop images uh, or background images rather. So um, what we'll need to do is actually give these uh, each of these containers an individual ID. And I'm just going to label it up as exactly the same as we have here. Okay, so now in our CSS we can target each of those individually. Okay, so we've got those three uh, divs targeted via their ID now. So let's actually give them a background image. So simply using the background image CSS property and in our image folder, we'll just 
simply name those with the images that we downloaded. Okay, so if we refresh the page again, you should find that it starts to load in those uh, images. And that's looking uh, more like we were trying to achieve in the uh, original project. So uh, there's a problem, obviously, because these um, images are kind of, we want them to kind of stretch across the screen and, and to fit that. So the easy way to do that is to target the uh, each individual div with the section uh, class that we created and just set the flex of each of those to one. So basically, as I said, this isn't a Flexbox tutorial, but it will set each of those section div elements to uh, take up an equal amount of space. Uh, so if we refresh the page. So now that the images are actually loading, we need to make sure that the uh, they're actually being covered uh, or it covers as much of the page as we can. So um, we can actually just do that in the uh, section uh, div elements. And if we just set the background size to cover, maybe also we'll just set the uh, position to centered as well. And now if we refresh the page again, you should find that now they're actually displaying as we'd like them to see them. The, and it's pretty much taken up a hundred viewpoint uh, height units at the moment. But so you can see we've still got a bit of padding in the body. Uh, so let's remove that as well. Um, let's just do a bit of a, a reset here and we'll say in the body, uh, our padding zero, our margin zero as well. And if we look now, we should find that that's all fitting together nicely as one unit. Okay, so there's a couple of things. Uh, this font looks a bit rubbish to the starters, and we probably want it in the middle of the uh, page here. The black color is obviously um, blending in some of the background image that's there. So let's sort the font out first, and I'll just use a Google Fonts uh, to get us going. You might have something better that you could use. Um, we'll go with Montserrat. I've used that before. Let's just import that into the document. So we can put that just above our style and I'm being lazy here, just copying the font family from there. And we'll just save that. In. So the other thing, thing I said we wanted to do was also to uh, make sure that the, uh, the text is actually centered. And I'm going to do that by turning the uh, actual section div elements into a flex box as well. And what that will enable me to do is just to say justify the content and just let's center it and also align any items inside there uh, in the center too. Flexbox just makes that dead easy for us. Uh, so let's go ahead and refresh the page again. And when it loads, you can see now we've got the new font and it's lovely and centered in the middle of our page. Um, so the final thing, just before we look at the actual hover and rollover transition, is to uh, actually make this stand out a little bit more. So what I really want to do is kind of put a filter onto the image to make it darker uh, and then change the font color here so that it stands out. But that's really tricky to do because there's no real CSS rule to uh, apply a filter to a background image. Um, there is a few experimental technologies, but we want something that will work on the majority of people's browsers. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create another div inside each of these section divs and just set it as a background color with a, a, a black transparent background and make sure that's just sitting nicely um, over the background but not uh, in front of the text that we're creating. Okay, so uh, the best way around this first of all is to put some new divs inside our markup. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is just wrap anything that we want to be above the background in a, a new div called content and I'm going to put an overlay div inside there so that'll just be a, a blank div so let me just do that for uh, the technology and advertising so with that markup in place we're ready to put our CSS rules in and what I'm going to do is just say uh, the section uh, dot overlay so that's the uh, the background that we want to make uh, darker uh, just set that as a background color and I'm going to use an RGBA property and 000 is black and I'll just set that to 0.7 in terms of opacity so quite a dark uh, black color over there. So we want that to fill the entire uh, div and we also want to make sure it fits the height too so 
and I'm going to say position is going to be absolute and we need to make sure that the the parent element which is the section div element uh, has relative positioning on it so the other thing to do is make sure that the uh, color for the text is set as white and if we go back and refresh the page and also that the text has changed white but unfortunately it is sitting behind the uh, the content div is actually sitting behind that overlay div so that's easy enough to fix uh, we'll just target that specifically so we'll say uh, section dot content and just raise the z index of that uh, by one so now when we refresh the page, you can see that the text, uh, the content div is now sitting on top of that. So we've got nice bright white text over a, a faded backdrop element and all without having to use a filter or anything like that. Okay, so finally on to the main event. Uh, and you'll be surprised to know that this is probably the e easiest bit. Um, so what we need to do is going back to the code. Uh, the first thing is we're going to just set up a hover event for when someone hovers over one of these sections. So let's do section and then we'll target a hover. And in there, uh, all we're gonna do is say flex is equal to two. So if you remember, near the start of the tutorial we said that the section has a flex of one which means each of those sections has um, an equal amount of space on the screen so by setting the one that we hover to two that should actually make it grow uh, and if we go back and refresh the page when we hover over one of these it's automatically taking up more space than the other two and of course it will be in proportion as well so if we were to remove one of these or add some more um, we don't need to do any more calculations in terms of CSS and widths or anything like that it's all just taken care of through the flexbox properties okay so um, that works at the moment but we want to have that nice smooth transition and the way we do that is just with the transition property so on the section div elements we just add a transition property and we say we want to transition the flex, uh, any changes to the flex CSS property. And we'll say that's gonna last for 0.4 of a second. Uh, you don't wanna go too mad with the times uh, for transitions when you add those on. So uh, this will transition between any changes that happen to flex on the section element. So uh, refreshing the page, you can see now we've got that nice smooth transition between each of those individual section elements on the page. So there we go, lovely. Um, so there's one other thing that we need to add in, which is the lightening of the background image. And because we've set that up as the overlay, uh, all we need to really do is just adjust the background property. So again, that's dead simple. Um, let's just say, um, when we hover over the section, um, we want to do something with the overlay. And what we want to do is just set the uh, background color and it'll just be RGBA again. So it's currently at 0 0.7 and you can perform any sort of change to the color that you want, but I'm gonna make it darker and just to make it uh, more prominent on the page. And oops, if I just make sure we've got the right amount of numbers in there. We just need to make sure that we've got a transition set up on that as well. And we'll do the same thing as we did before. Um, but this time, instead of putting it on the parent section div element, we'll just make sure we're targeting the uh, the overlay itself. Uh, so let's say transition and we're targeting uh, background color here. And let's make it a little bit longer. Let's say it's 0.8 of a second and we'll ease that in too. So save that. Let's go back to the page and refresh it. So now hopefully when we hover, you'll see that, yep, yeah, it's growing. And also the uh, filter or the that overlay that we've created is also getting darker. So there you have it. We have our accordion based uh, CSS transitions and no JavaScript in sight. Um, and just the very basics in HTML markup with the uh, relevant uh, CSS properties applied. And you can really do some quite interesting and impressive things with it. So I hope you found that tutorial useful and picked up a few hints and tips. Uh, if you did, drop me a comment below and give the video a like. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more tutorials and web development tips.